Hello everyone, my name is Cora Lynn Monroe Lines and today I'll be talking about media literacy in the classroom. I'll be discussing the basics of media literacy and how you can apply media literacy in the classroom. The core principles of media literacy are derived from the National Association for Media Literacy Education, formerly known as Alliance for a Media Literate America. They are the leading nonprofit organization dedicated to advancing media literacy education in the United States. They were first formed in 1997 and currently have over 55 members worldwide. NAML is a great place for finding additional resources on media literacy for a variety of purposes. Media literacy refers to all print, digital, or artistic visuals used to transmit a message. Literacy is the ability to decode and symbols and synthesize. So the National Association for Media Literacy Education defines media literacy as the ability to encode and decode the symbols transmitted via media and synthesize, analyze, and produce mediated messages. Media literacy is not an anti-media movement. Instead, it's a coalition of people who raise questions about the impact of media on society. Information ecosystems are becoming more and more complex, and because of this, media literacy seeks to understand information ecosystems and how they affect the way we think, feel, and behave. Habitually, media literate people are critical thinkers, effective communicators, and active citizens in today's world. NAMO believes that media literacy education requires active inquiry and critical thinking about the messages we, re we receive. Media literacy education expands the concept of literacy to include all forms of media. This includes both media that we read and media that we write. Media literacy education can be learned at any age and reinforces skills for learners of all ages. Now we'll state that media literacy education develops informed, reflective, and engaged participants essential for a democratic society and media literacy education recognizes that media are part of culture and function as agents of socialization. Media literacy education affirms that people use their individual skills, beliefs, and experiences to construct their own meaning for media messages. So let's break some of these principles down further. Media literacy is not a have it or not have competency, rather, NAML states that media literacy is an ever-evolving continuing of skills, knowledge, attitudes, and actions. For those reasons, media literacy cannot be taught in a single session. Teachers should provide students with many opportunities to use and develop skills of analysis and expression. Because media changes so rapidly and the way we communicate is further changing, is forever changing, Media literacy requires constant learning, reflecting, and building skills to en enable folks to be able to make informed decisions. NAML states that media literacy education engages students with a variety of learning styles and should be taught as a co-learning pedagogy. So this means that teachers learn from students and students learn from both the teacher and classmates. Media literacy education informs uh, build skills that encourage informed decision making and lifelong learning and teaches media management. Media literacy education teaches learners about the influence of media and how they can make informed decisions regarding the information they interact with. Media literacy education integrates media texts that present diverse voices, perspectives, and communities. Media literacy education includes opportunities to examine alternate, alternative media and international perspectives and addresses issues of representation. For example, violence, gender, sexuality, racism, and stereotyping. MLE promotes a variation in perspectives and experiences and acknowledges that those special experiences changes one's perspective of media messages. MLE states that the responsibility of disseminating accurate information is on media owners, producers, and members of the creative community. So for example, 
uh, media literacy education believes responsibility for disseminating information on social media sites like Facebook falls on both Facebook as a company and on those who interact with information on Facebook. NAML states that media literacy education does not exclude media makers from their responsibilities as members of the community to make a positive contribution and avoid doing harm. NAML states media literacy education is not about teaching students what to think. It's about teaching them how they can arrive at an informed decision that is consistent with their own values and become aware of and reflect on our own interpretations of media messages. This is, there is a lot of reflexivity in media literacy because many people find information on social media sites where they participate in information transmission and have the potential to reach many people. Thus, information transmission on sites like Facebook, oh, sorry, as mentioned, um, because information transmission on sites like Facebook has the potential to reach thousands of people, those who engage on these, engage in information transmission on these sites are also uh, media makers. Media literacy education recognizes that students' interpretations of media messages may differ from the teacher and other students, and that is okay. Students and teachers may have different interpretations of media messages, but they can both be correct. This is an example of co-pedagogy that was mentioned in the previous slide. NAML states that media literacy education also facilitates growth understand and understanding through reflective discovery. So um, NAML breaks down analyzing media messages into three big categories. The first is author and audience. Second is messages and meaning. And the third is representation and reality. Author and audience ask questions about one, the author, so who made the media, two, the purpose, so why was it made and what do they want me to do with this information? Economics, so who paid for the media post? Its effect, who is benefiting and who is being harmed by this post and responses. How do I respond to media messages while considering how it makes me feel and how my emotions influence my interpretation of media messages? The second category is messages and meaning. They ask questions about the content, techniques, and interpretation. So what does, the, what does the message want me to think or learn? This includes ideas, values, information, and viewpoints. What information is left out? This is also very important. What techniques did they use and why? And how might different people understand or perceive this message differently? This message differently. What is my interpretation and what do I learn about myself from my interpretation? And the last category, representation and reality, talks about context and credibility. So when was this made and where or how was it shared with the public? Is it fact, opinion, or something else? Is it credible? Can I trust this source? And what are the sources of information, ideas, or search or assertions. If you'd like to learn more about media literacy education, NAML has a monthly newsletter about media literacy education. Okay, now on to media literacy instruction tips. Classrooms that adopt high levels of cognitive questioning and answering through increasing the complexity of case studies have proven to enhance students' critical thinking skills. This exercise was adapted from the podcast, Visions of Education. They had a special segment with guest speaker, Renee Hobbs, who is one of the leading voices in media literacy education in the United States. You can find information about where to find these, this podcast in the additional resources handout you were given at the beginning of this, of this course or this class. So as you can see, uh, this is a credibility scale um, game. 
So there will be two teams and approximately four to five students per team with four to five articles uh, relating to this same topic. The students are gonna rank those articles from most credible to least credible. Additionally, not only do they have to rank them from most to least, but they have to decide where on the credibility scale the article is most suited. So for example, as you can see, T1 believes they have two articles that are probably credible and three that are definitely not. Whereas team two has one that's definitely not credible and um, one that's de that is credible and two that are closer to the middle. Research conducted in 2012 found using argument maps enhances students' ability to understand and use critical thinking skills because it is a multimodal approach to learning. This would be a great addition to the previous exercise on the last slide. Uh, you can have them pass in this argument map so that you could give them feedback uh, on how they rate their credibility of different sources. It is recommended not assigning a grade for this exercise. Rather, it's recommended to provide feedback in which the student can integrate in an upcoming assignment on critical thinking. There are lots of tools out there to help you navigate the large amount of media we see daily. This is a great diagram for understanding the bias and political agenda of news outlets. Additionally, looking at the About Us section of the news outlets provides insight into the validity of the company. Okay, to end off this, uh, this lecture, I'd like you to head over to Factitious. It's an augmented game. It's really fun to play. Uh, you just have to determine whether or not a newspaper is fake. Um, you can post in the discussion board how you felt about that and what your thoughts are on this, this lecture. Thank you so much for your time.